Wiping your rager wastes a lot of time and effort, especially yours. So today I'm helping you not be that one person who dooms everyone while fighting Artificer Zymox, the boss from a newly opened wing in Alephar. My name is Ivona and if you're here for the first time, I encourage you to press that sub button because I do a bunch of super simple WoW guides for raids, dungeons, classes, mounts, pets and a bunch of other stuff. If you enjoy getting some easy wins and cool loot, my channel is definitely the place to be. When it comes to this guy, I have to mention that it's oriented mostly towards DPS and all players venturing into LFR or normal difficulty. So if you're a tank, healer or more advanced player in general, you want to look for additional strategies, but over here we keep it sweet and simple. The whole combat revolves around three stages that are defined by relics and they change according to the boss's health. However, there are some abilities that the boss will be using throughout the fight and we'll talk about those first. Dimensional Tear is a debuff that'll affect two random non-tank players at a time. It lasts 8 seconds and it is your job to place that wormhole that the debuff will spawn in the correct position depending on which relic is active. The wormhole is essentially a portal that players will use to their advantage throughout the boss fight and it's quite fun. The next ability is Glyph of Destruction and this affects the tanks who need to use the wormhole or run away when it's applied to them. Another one is Rift Blast which is simply a line coming out of a portal that you need to avoid and the last one is Hyper Light Spark dealing quite a bit of damage jumping from one raid member to another. So if you're a healer drink some coffee and enjoy that. There's also some AoE damage called Called Soul Singe, and it can indeed overlap with Hyper Light Spark and Glyph of Destruction, so using your healing cooldowns is a wise move. Alright, so the first stage is defined with the first relic, called Crystal of Phantasms, lasting from 100% to 70% HP. There will be a green crystal in the air above the middle of the room, so you'll know it begins. If you're marked with Dimensional Tier, run to the far east or to the far west, opposite of the other marked player, and wait there until there's a wormholes fall in your spot. There needs to be some amount of teamwork between the marked players involved to be able to quickly decide who goes where, and it's always better for the classes with more mobility tools to take the further route. There are going to be some ads hunting random players, and the debuff is called a fleeting spirit, so if you're marked with it, run through the portal so the ad can't catch you. Sometimes you'll even have to do this twice if the ad starts catching up with you, and in case they ever do, you'll get mind controlled. If someone gets possessed, others need to deal damage to him to snap him out of it. The second stage, defined by the relic called Root of Extinction, lasts from 70 to 40% HP. You'll know it begins when you see a staff floating in the air above the center of the room. You can't miss it. Here, you also need to position Dimensional Tier in the far west and east, just like in the previous stage. The raid needs to be positioned near one of those wormholes. A seed of extinction is going to spawn and one player needs to pick it up and use the wormhole to take it to the other side of the room, far away from the raid group. There will be four of those seeds in the north, south, west and east. If you're new to this raid, my recommendation is to not be the person moving those seeds as it can get confusing really quickly. So just be where the other people are and have someone else take the seed away from the group. Also, whoever is afflicted with Withering Touch needs to be healed and it's probably best if they're not the ones dealing with the seed carrying. And that's pretty much it for phase 2. The last stage is defined by Edge of Annihilation, lasting from 40% HP until the boss is down. And it's essentially a great big sword in the middle of the room. This stage is different when it comes to positioning the wormholes. They need to be in the middle of the room and either in the east or in the west of the room, just like on Cheat Sheet. The boss will be cast edge of annihilation and dealing lethal damage to anyone within 25 yards. So we need to run into the middle wormhole just before the cast is completed. Challenging part is the whole raid needing to remain stacked as it will make your healers lives a lot easier and it can sometimes well not happen in pug groups so try to either be the voice of reason you now possess or at least be the person doing the right thing. And that is pretty much it for this boss. It can be a tricky one mostly because people in pug groups don't know each other all that well and don't really communicate but if you use the chat or if you're in a group you're familiar with you'll have an easier time. If this encounter makes sense to you now, press that like button and don't forget to sub for more simple guides. Thank you so much for watching and have fun in Castle Nathria. Good luck and bye bye.